you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, a man called X. Far over the storm-blanketed Transjordan hills, somewhere between Cairo and Tehran, Ken Thurston and Pagan Zellschmidt, in a private plane, battle a terrific storm. Blacker than the inside of a head out there, Mr. Thurston. How can you even see where to fly this plane? Pagan, I can't. <laughs> and what are we going to do? I don't know what I like to do to that mechanic and tear around. Not an instrument on this board's working right. Oh. The way we've been kicking around in this storm, I don't even know what... Uh-oh. Mr. X, the engine's gunked out. Yeah. Then what do we do now? Well, I want to get one look at the ground. Don't even know how far up we are. Look, in that flash of light. Yeah, top of a hill, dead ahead. Mr. X, we got a hit. If I get a level off, hang on, hang on. <laughs> to grow. I must live. Men must want me to live. And no place on the earth can be called my home. Listen. Can you not hear it? The voice of the world rising up out of the dark valleys below this hill. Yes, I, I hear it. Is it not horrible, that voice? Terrible with its jealous, greed, selfish hate. Yes, it's not pretty. Can I live and grow up in a world like this? But, child, you can't judge mankind from the top of a hill. You have to go down among them. I've been down among them. Seen their wars and heard rumors of wars. There are other things to hear. When well, you know how to listen. Come with me now. Down there? Down in those valleys? How can we? Why not? It's Christmas. So anything can happen. Come along, child. The little boy was playing. Tiny Tim. He's crippled, isn't he? Yes. Wait. Listen. I'll let you play it better every month. It's a great virtuoso. You'll be Tiny Tim. It was a marvelous song, Timmy boy. Oh, thank you, everyone. Maybe when spring comes, I shall be able to play for pennies in the street. Then I'll help you, Father. Bless you, lad. <laughs> and now I think I should tune my fiddle. 
One string was ever so slightly flat, you know. Such a serious lad. Oh, he says strange things sometimes. He told me in church this morning he hoped all the people would see him and remember who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. It's a lucky family we are, Robert. There's few in this world that had as much as we. That's something of a joke, my dear, with the little I'm able to give you. Robert Cratchit, when I think of all the years we've had and such wonderful children... And you always so cheerful and understanding of our needs. Oh, along with you now. What about that surprise? Heart alive, I'd almost forgotten it. Quiet, everybody. I have a surprise for you. I'll bring it right now. Now, I wonder what it could possibly be. I'll wait you. I can guess, Father. Look, everyone. Here it is. A plum pudding blazing like the sun itself. It's saying Merry Christmas to all of us. Yes, and God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Jimmy Ladd. Such a beautiful dish needs a real salute. Take your fiddle and play us an overture to the pudding. Hurrah, an overture to the pudding. Any reason why you couldn't find a home there, child? Oh, I could. It would be so easy if all people were like them. There are a great many like them. If you know where to look. Who are they? That was the family of a certain Bob Cratchit. A clerk in the London firm of Scrooge and Marley in the year 1840. The Christmas Carol. Those were not even real people. They came from a book. Must I live then only in books? This is here and now, and things are different. Are they so very different? Aren't those the same stars glittering overhead that shone a hundred years ago? Or a thousand, or ten thousand? Real people sleep in the dirt and never look at the stars. Not all of them. I can think of one right now. On the other side of the earth, in a little flat in Queens. I could walk up a certain stairway there tonight and ring a doorbell. Ken Thurston. Hello, Marion. Ken, oh, come on in. Oh, it's good to see you. Here, let me take some of those packages. Well, thanks. I, I guess I was pretty well loaded down. Who is it, Mommy? Who's there? It's Mr. Thurston, Donnie. You remember Daddy's friend. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hiya, Donnie. Look, packages. I'll bet they're presents. Donnie, okay. take them into the other room and put them around your tree. All right. Boy, I wonder what's inside all these old packages. Anyway. <laughs> He's growing so fast, Ken. And I think every day he looks more like a Yes, I, I noticed that. I wouldn't want it any other way, Ken. That's how it should be. Well, it's the only reason for my still being alive. You're a pretty brave girl, Marion. Jerry was brave at Anvil. What he did was for Donnie, too, you know. Are you, uh, getting along all right, Marion? I mean, is there anything you need? We're getting along perfectly. Oh, I resent my job keeping me away from my son in the daytime. But we've evenings, in the park on Sundays, and snow in winter, and merry-go-rounds, and ice cream sodas, and... Oh, don't worry about us, Ken. We'll be all right. Yes. If there's one thing in this shaky world I can be certain of, it's that. You'll be all right. I could open other doors like that one, many others. She was a heroine. And they are too few and far between. Try to walk a hundred steps without finding one. It is no use. I know you as one whom sometimes men call X. You too fight for my cause. But the world is filled with hate. And I shall live in it no longer. All right. Then I'll show you why you've got to live. Grow up. Even if it takes proof so fantastic as to seem incredible. How can you? How can you know what I need when you don't even know my name? Would you like me to say it for you? Could you? You know who I am? Yes, child. I know who you are. I know very well who you are.
continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Somewhere between Cairo and Tehran, a plane carrying Ken Thurston and Pagan Zellschmidt fought its way through the raging blackness of a storm. In a blinding flash of lightning, a hilltop loomed ahead, and a second later, the plane smashed into it. Then suddenly, the storm was gone. A million cold, bright stars glittered overhead, and Ken stood outside on the hilltop, talking to a strange little girl who seemingly came from nowhere, everywhere. Proof indeed that at Christmas time, anything can happen. You must know that I want to live and to grow. I've loved this world, seen beautiful things happen in it, and found each time in those things new hope. But then each time, I've seen that new hope die. The world has not grown wise nor clean. The years have only made it old and dirty, not fit to live in. But I know there's hope in it yet. Hope for both of us. After all, I think we're both searching for the same thing. I'm done with searching. And with hoping and with living. And what of those who follow you, believe in you? What about those people who all their lives put the needs of humanity above their own needs? And are there such on the earth anymore? <laughs> Are the stars still overhead? Do you know even one? One? I know a lot of them down in those valleys below us. But let's take just one. Man, I've known for a long time. I've got a pretty good idea where we might find him tonight. Look a long way off, child. Look half around the world. Possibly some stricture there, all right. A thrombus, maybe. How's the pulse? Still fast? 97, Doctor. Hmm. Well, that's all we can do now. What time is it, Miss Nelson? It's after midnight. Oh, good Lord. No wonder I'm tired. Dr. Richards, I've been a supervisor with this hospital long enough to have a right to contradict you once in a while. Hmm? About what? You're not tired because it's after midnight. You're tired because you haven't had a decent night's sleep in five years. Ah. What's more, you had a checkup at the clinic six months ago. I happen to know what they told you. They didn't know what they were talking about. Bunch of crepe hangers. They told you to work only four hours a day. When are you going to start doing it? Four hours a day when people are dying 24 hours a day. There are other doctors. Yeah, there are a lot of other problems from too. Seen kids like this one come in here year after year. You could never do a blasted thing for them. Well, now, after five years, I can do something for them. And in another year, I'll have the technique perfected so every doctor can use it. If you live long enough. I'll live long enough. If I stop now, throw away the chance to beat this thing just so I could live another 20 years, then, well, then there'd be no sense to anything in this world. You've got a life, too, Dr. Richards. Oh, poppycock. Oh, I suppose you think I'm a fool, Miss Nelson. If I told you what I think you are, you'd... You'd just laugh it off. But no. No, Dr. Richards. I don't think you're a fool. Can't you believe there are others, too? Other people who think of their fellow men first and themselves second? Yes. Oh, yes, there must be others. And can't they be called believers in you, these selfless people? Yes, but they too are heroes. Ordinary people must believe if I'm to live and grow up. Well, what can be more ordinary than a boy and girl in love? Paris, London, Vienna, Shanghai, New York. There's nothing in the world so beautifully ordinary as a boy and girl in love. Lovely out there across the harbor. Even like tonight when it's foggy. As long as you're in it, honey, the whole world's lovely. We're terribly lucky. Suppose we hadn't found each other. Oh, we couldn't miss. We're a natural. How could you tell? The first time I knew. What made you know you were in love with me? You came down the street in a crowd. And all of a sudden, there wasn't any crowd. Only you. So I decided I must be in love. 
do you think there may be other people as happy somewhere in the world? Not a chance. But there must be. People who are in love, too. Millions of them. Oh, I love every one of them. Now I am jealous. Oh, but you do, too. You know you do. It makes you feel close to me. Yeah, I, I guess I do it that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound mournful? I can't hear it. When I look at you, all I can hear is music. I know. I can hear it, too. The most beautiful music in the world. It says, I love you. I love you, my darling. It's true. There are millions who love someone else. And with them, I can have hope. But they can see beyond themselves. Sometimes far beyond. Far enough to see you and believe in you. They do want me to live and grow up. All those who love. There are even greater reasons, child. But they are in a place a long way off from this crowded hill. Dark valleys. And the wrecked plane lying over there. Where? We can go to them. We can go anywhere tonight. Because it's Christmas time when anything can happen. We can try. Do you know what time means? It's a stream that flows forever in one direction. We'll have to move again, for this place lies far up the stream, toward the headwaters of time, outside the universe, a long way off. But we can try. Oh, but it's beautiful. What a glorious place. What wondrous spot in all eternity have we come? This is the realm of tomorrow. All of these wonderful things. I have no names for them. There are no names for them, child. They're still a part of tomorrow. This one. Oh, how beautiful. Look at it. Just look at it. It's one of tomorrow's dreams, child. Gilded with expectations. Gleamy with fulfillment. And this one. Oh, how lovely. That's one of tomorrow's hopes. And here's another. So proud and so splendid. It's an ideal not yet realized. Another part of tomorrow. There are so many wondrous things. Things never seen on the face of the earth. Nor will they ever be. If you decide not to live. Yes. Wait. This door, where does it lead? Why not open it? Find out. I will. I will. Babies. Millions of babies. Look at them. Those of the unborn. And they'll never be anything else unless you decide to live. Oh, they're so beautiful. Everything here is so beautiful. It can't be lost. We can't let it be lost. The choice is yours, child. It's your choice. I've made my choice. Let's go back. Back to the hills and the stars and the valleys of the world. Why did I ever think it was? But the voice of hate still sounds from it. Have you forgotten? No, I've not forgotten yet. But it only sounds so big because hate has the loudest voice. I can hear another sound far off in the black night. It's a voice from the hearts of heroes. A song of hope and love and understanding. You call them heroes. Why not, why not men of goodwill? Yes, men of goodwill. I can live in a world that has such men. And you must live for such men. They are the ones who believe in you. Yes. And they must believe. As I believe in them. Know this. You who are called X. I shall live. And I shall grow. And someday I shall rule this world. Wait, don't go. I must. 
It's nearly dawn. You are waking up. Do you understand? You are waking up. Yes. Yes, I understand. What happened? Came for a pretty rough landing in the dark. Must have been out for hours. The dawn's starting to break over there. I'm stiffened up. I must have broken the leg or something. You'll be all right. So we'll get out of this wreck and walk around a little. This shouldn't have woke me up. I was having a beautiful dream. All about money. Yes, I had a dream too. Here, hand me that map. Huh? Oh, here. Uh, uh, was it about money, Mr. X? It was about a little girl. Little girl? Anybody we know? Somebody a lot of people know. A lot of others ought to know. Yeah? What's her name? Oh, the French call her Pay. The Romans used to call her Pax. Pagon, her name is Peace. Peace? That's a strange name. She's a strange little girl. Come on, Pagon, let's get out of this wreck. Hey, look, Mr. X. Down there in the flat. It's a little town. Yeah, that's what I was checking on the map. Come on, I want to get a wire off to the chief. Which way? Down this path? No, pig on straight ahead. Toward the sunrise. Mr. Thurston, look. The sun's coming up. It's lighting up those houses, turning them purple and red and gold. All kinds of colors. What's the name of that little town? Pig on. If the map is right, if that dream is true, that little town is called Bethlehem. I do want to say something to our good friends in the radio audience. For well, this is the time of year when you think about your friends, about those whose, whose names you know and about other friends, too. People you just haven't been fortunate enough to meet but would like to meet very much. Because you know you'd like them, and, well, maybe they'd like you, too. Well, it seems to me that uh, takes in just about everybody, Bart. I think it does. And so to everybody who can hear my voice, to all our friends, I want to say, for our sponsor, Frigidaire, and for all of us here in the studio, a very Merry Christmas. We'll all say amen to that, Bart. A very Merry Christmas. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Pagan was played by Leon Belasco, and tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.